All right, so we're going to talk about ionic bonds. An ionic bonds is actually an electrostatic force that holds two ions together. And don't forget, ions are charged particles. They actually give or receive extra electrons. Um, so an ionic bond is the force that holds these ions together in a crystal. It's a ratio of ions. So what exactly are ionic bonds consistent of? Well, they actually make up, metals and nonmetals actually make up ionic bonds. Metals are cations, or which are positively charged ions, which means they give up their electrons. And they actually give their electrons to the nonmetals, which are the, we're going to call the anions, or the negatively charged particles. So they transfer their electrons from the metals to the nonmetals. Um, all right, so let's take one for example. Let's do sodium. We know sodium has the electron configuration of neon 3s1. And you know it comes with chlorine. This is typical table salt, the ones you put on your dinner uh, to flavor your food. So chlorine has the electron configuration of neon 3s2, 3p5. Um, so what happens is sodium is going to say, OK, well, I'd rather give up this electron so I can have the stable configuration of neon. And chlorine's well, like, well, I would like to get one so I can have the stable configuration of argon. So what's going to happen? Well, sodium's going to be super nice and give up its electron to chlorine. Chlorine's then going to have a configuration of 3p6, which is great because it's a configuration of argon, very stable. And sodium's going to get rid of this, and it's going to have the configuration of neon, again, very stable, so everybody's really happy. Pictorially, you can describe this uh, using Lewis dot diagrams. Sodium has uh, one valence electron. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and what happens is sodium's going to give up its electron to chlorine, making it a total of eight electrons around it, and sodium has none, which is fantastic. Uh, sodium becomes a positive ion, chlorine becomes a negative ion coming together to what we now know as table salt, sodium chloride. Okay, so how do we other things come together? Well, if you look over here, um, we're going to uh, and the, these are the groups. Of the, these are representative of the groups uh, one through eight in the periodic table. We're going to exclude the transition metals because those are kind of varying and get a little tricky. So we'll talk about those another time. But if you look at groups one through eight, just the representative metals or elements, um, we know that all electrons want to have the same configuration as a noble gas. So how do we get that? Um, group one has could either gain seven more electrons or lose one electron. So it's probably going to lose that one electron, making it a plus one charge. Group two, they could either gain six or lose two. And as you guessed it, they're going to lose those two, making it a positive two charge. Group three, they could either lose three or gain five. They're going to lose three. Things in group four, the carbon group, typically don't make ions. So they're gonna not going to gain or lose electrons normally. So we're going, to have a, we're going to predict them to have a charge of zero. Group five can either gain three or lose those five. And this is the one that's actually going to gain those three, making it a negative three charge. Group six is going to gain those two. Group seven is going to gain that one. And group eight, we know, loves to be the way it is, so it's going to keep it the way it is. We're not going to do anything to group eight. They're the noble gases. We're not going to touch those guys. OK, so just knowing that, we can then predict how these guys are going to come together to make a neutral um, ratio, because uh, ionic bonds are all neutral, unless typically uh, unless noted otherwise. And we're going to say they're all neutral. So <clears throat> things in group one, sodium's in group one, we're going to say it's a plus one charge. Nitrogen's in group five, it's a minus three charge. We want to make this neutral. So how, how many are going to come together to make this a neutral, um, a neutral compound? Well, an easy way to go about doing this is this number, ignore the, ignore the sign, is going to be how many sodium atoms there are. This number is going to be how many nitrogen atoms there are. Because if we do plus 1 times 3 and uh, negative 3 times 1, we're going to get an overall charge of zero, which is great, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to end up with the with the atom that look or with the <clears throat> ionic compound that looks like this, Na3N. Notice I didn't put the one there; it's just unnecessary. The fact that the nitrogen is actually there tells us that there's one of them there at minimum. So this would be our um, our ionic our ionic combination of sodium and nitrogen. So let's do aluminum. Aluminum is in group three, which means the plus three charge. Sulfur is in group six, which means it's a minus two charge. Doing our trick, we're going to just exchange those numbers, making it Al2S3. Easy enough. What if we get a situation where this happens? So we have calcium, which is in group two, which is a plus two. Oxygen is in group six, which is a minus two. We could just exchange those numbers, as we've been doing, and get Ca2O2. But we like to have it in the lowest ratio possible. We don't want this. We want to make sure these are the lowest ratio. So we can reduce these two to two to make it CaO. So we don't have to write those two twos. 
So we, need to, we want to make sure that these are the lowest ratio possible, in this case they are, and this is how you make ionic bonds. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be... Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. <laughs> <laughs>